Hi, this is Inge from Inge's Knitting Lab in Denmark. Welcome back to my knitting channel. If you're new, welcome. Today in the dip section, design in progress, we will cover this new design of mine, the beach drop top. As you can see, I have kept the stitch markers here because in the section of knitting math hack, we will cover how and where to use um, short rows in your knitwear. You can use short rows many places, but today we will start at the neckline. So I guess in the dip section, you will see my designs more times depending on where I am in the process, because I just like exploring and experimenting new to me stuff. And while exploring and practicing, I hope to become a skilled and experienced knitwear designer. You have to reach for the stars, right? Um, and I hope by a lot of effort and hard work, I will get there and magic will happen for me. If not, I guess I will have to find new stars to reach for. In the finished object section, we will cover uh, the design of mine, the flower body, and you can see I've just finalized and blocked uh, this in size X mold. In the whip section, the work in progress, uh, I have the anchor summer blouse from Petit Knit. So today, this is the color palette um, on my whip basket. Um, the uh, light pink uh, rosa uh, balls here. Uh, they are for a new test knit of the flower body in size large for one in my family. I just like to knit for other people. So I have had a new request. My young niece would like this uh, uh, sweater, as you can see in the picture beside me. Wow, it's great. But again, I couldn't find the designer. I've searched high and low, um, but with no luck. So I call up for help again. If you can see or know uh, the designer, please let me know so I have a pattern to go for. Otherwise, I will have to work from the picture. And this leads me to another section of the video being knitting fun facts. And today we will talk about connectivity of knitters around the world. Just a practical remark before we go onwards with the beach drop top. If you want to go to a specific section of my video, you can use the timestamps, uh, the small movie clips and uh, to move forward and backwards. And I hope by this video, you will get a bit inspired maybe have a laugh at my craziness or a well-deserved moment to relax and sit and knit with me for a while. I thrive by learning more about your knitting projects, your thoughts and ideas and angle and feedback on mine. So don't hesitate to comment. I would enjoy it very much. Let's get started. Let's start with the beach drop top and the name of it. How, how was my association? I love to go to the beach and as often as I can, I like to have a swim and also bring my grandson. And I like to wear something which is easy to throw on and drop off. And we have the drop stitches, hence the name drop uh, and beach. Um, and top is because it's a uh, two piece uh, garment in the back and a front piece so it's very easy and it's not even sewed together only in just one point you can see from the picture and from the modeling because as you saw in the intro a lot of stuff is going on in the garden right now and the kind neighbor he has helped out trimming the trees and while her husband and my husband were busy working hard trimming the trees, she and I were waltzing around in the garden trying to do some videos to, to show uh, the piece on her. And uh, she offered to, uh, to model this, uh, this new top. And doesn't she look gorgeous? 
I think she does and it suits her very well. And uh, she likes it so much that I have decided to gift it to her. Yeah, and uh, as you also saw in Ito, it's a sidetrack, but uh, pictures of the garden because um, while uh, knitting is my passion, uh, gardening is definitely one of my husband's. So he's very busy in the kitchen garden where he uh, makes biodynamic uh, vegetables and providing the the family collective with our own vegetables. Mm, crispy and very nice. Yeah, but back to the garment. So two piece garment worked uh, bottom up and it's a very easy pattern um, and very quick knit, I would say, also due to the drop stitches. So it's a pattern repeat of three stitches and 16 rows. So I start in the bottom part with the garter uh, stitches uh, to provide a kind of a hem or border and then I start with some uh, uh, knit stitches, the Estonian stitches, uh, knit stitches and the pearl ridges and then over and over again and if you don't know the Estonian stitches it's three gathered stitches I do them when I, I knit in the back loop of three uh, stitches make a yarn over, knit again, and then you keep uh, three stitches on the needle and it provides this nice, I feel, texture. And this enclose the drop stitches here. And then I just knitted a couple of rows and on the, then I make the drop stitches by knitting one yarn over twice, knit one yarn over twice. And then on the following uh, uh, needle, uh, the wrong side, I drop the stitches and they uh, will be like, uh, yeah, more rows. So this gives me a bit of a pickle in the side because I chose to make garter stitches as a, a, a border here on the side. And I had to use uh, uh, short rows here, go forth and back uh, two times in order to provide enough fabric uh, to catch up with the drop stitches so that uh, it wouldn't be shorter in the side that, than in, in the middle. So that's how I did it. And uh, then up here, um, I, uh, I did short rows again. And I just love the fact that you can avoid casting off stitches. You can keep them on the needle. You just figure out how to do the short rows, do one shoulder, oh, 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 then knit to the other side, mm, 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 mm. and then you keep uh, the, the stitches on your needles, and then you can knit the shoulders together, you still have stitches on the needle, and you can do the neckband, which is a simple garter, um, uh, garter stitches here, to provide the same uh, as the hem. So, yeah, this is it. I didn't even sew it uh, together in the sides because it's an easy throw on. So as you can see on the picture and the model, it's just linked together a bit under the arm. Uh, so yeah, that's how it is. I hope you like it. And uh, I am wondering whether or not I should pattern this one. Um, I have uh, stitched up the chart in a stitch fiddle. Uh, uh, but I haven't made the written pattern yet. Um, so I guess in another short video, I will call out for help because I have more designs. So which one do you like better or which one should I write up next uh, after the flower party? Uh, maybe I forgot to tell uh, which yarn I used. It's this Fiesta yarn from Civic. And I have more colors to play with if I want to do more test knits. Uh, it is, um, it's a repeat from another video, but 40% viscose, 35% cotton and 25% nylon. And I can tell you now that I've worn it a bit. It is so soft and nice. And you know, when you get, um, when you're here, it's normal weather, it's it's nice and cooling, and, and but when you get up and it's cold and, and kind of this fuzziness hugs you and mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, 
you can tell I like it. So, uh, yeah. Enough about the bees dropped up. Just uh, a short recap of the flower bud tea. I'm in the process of making the written pattern and doing a tech review. By a tech review, I mean a review of all the calculations made in an Excel spreadsheet to see if there is logic behind the numbers and the grading and it fits with the standard sizing of uh, the yarn council I found and, and showed in the last episode. And uh, yeah, so, so a full review. And I made the testing myself in more sizes because um, because it is my first pattern and I want it to be nice before I call for test knitters. And it's really a good process because I found that I would like to improve the logic behind the pattern. It actually doesn't change the looks and, and the stitch count of the pattern, but the way it is built. So uh, you, you have many variables. I'll try not to make it too technical if you don't like it, but, but you can either change the number of repeats here or you can vary the number of raglan stitches here and the number of stitches under the arm. So this is what you can do and play with. And I want it to be logic uh, in the pattern, even though you make one size and don't bother about the rest, but I would like it to be very, to be visibly logic. Uh, and, and so that, for example, one example is that when you have size X small, you have a smaller amount of repeats than in size 5XL. That's one thing. Or you have more uh, repeats downwards in the yoke height in the larger sizes than the small sizes. And more stitches on the under the arm for the larger sizes than smaller sizes. And that it's, it's, it's grading. Maybe it's not that important because the end result would look and feel like the same. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a finishing perfectionism detail that I want. So that's what I'm doing. And of course, this will change a bit the written pattern that I've made. So I'm reviewing. I, um, for the tech review, my husband has often also to look at the Excel spreadsheet. He's definitely not a knitter, but he's a mathematician, so he can he can see through uh, if missing logic is there or macros or something not working as it should. Yeah, so I made this one and uh, in my quest to uh, look for alternative yarns, um, I made this one in Holst uh, Coast, which is approximately half wool, half cotton. And of course, this behaves differently than uh, um, uh, these plant fiber yarns, because whereas plant fiber uh, yarns have a cooling t feel to the touch, and uh, it's not stretchy at all, not at all. Uh, this is contrary to a woolen a yarn, which is very elastic and easily swoops back to its origin if, if we stretch it. And... Uh, it is more warm to the touch and feel. And uh, another difference is uh, that by wear, uh, this gets a bit, the summer yarns or, or the plant fiber yarns tend to get to grow a bit, which will not go back to its original shape. Uh, yeah, when you wash it. And that's a good thing about this. You can wash it. Uh, like you want and uh, it's not the same thing with uh, like you want in the machine I mean uh, yeah now I'm getting on a sidetrack about the prob properties of yarn and that was not my intention so I will try to swoop back let's move on to the pitted knit the anchor summer top or summer blouse I have it right here isn't it lovely? And it's, I've knitted more of her patterns. You've heard me praise her before. 
her patterns are so recognizable she does it the same way so it's easy to read easy to follow and the recipe is very uh, simple simple it's good right because it's yeah and if you knitted uh, the novice sweater or novice cardigan before you know the principle of her round yokes uh, you do two stitches yarn over two stitches next section three stitches yarn over and so on and so on this time with with ribbing sections so very easy and i got this request from one in my family who wanted this and she has recently become a mom i took her breast measurements as you probably know when you're breastfeeding uh you improve, uh, you you increase in, in breast size, and uh, she was just in the middle of, of large and and X large, uh, so mm -hmm, what to do? Uh, petite knit. She recommends an ease of zero to five centimeters, which is zero to two inches. So I thought, well, mm, not being too tight, uh, I aimed for the XL, and I started casting on for this size and went on on the yoke. And luckily I consulted her again regarding the size and she said, well, you know, I've lost weight and and I will get a smaller soon. So uh, I'm not breastfeeding anymore. So, so I mean, uh, I would aim for the large one. And then no problem at all because both the large and X large has this extra section. And uh, uh, you, you, you just um compensate here uh in the raglan section for the stitches you have too many here so it was no problem for for me at all to adjust here so i'm just come to the point of separating for body and sleeves and now i can move on a fast and nice knit it's with short sleeves so it will soon be finalized and uh, yeah she's waiting for it so that's nice so a small addition to when talking about this uh, yarn because this is Sandler's Garn Line, a lovely plant fiber yarn and it consists of 53% um, cotton, 33% viscose and 14% linen. Great yarn, great to knit with, great to wear. I just like it. I have been trying to find alternative yarns in order to provide for a range of uh, pricing for your uh, suiting your budget. And I actually have uh, three brands with exactly the same um, content of cotton, viscose and linen. So the, the Norwegian one, the Swedish one, Cecilia Svarteford, and also this Nordic one being Drops Bell. And I don't know what gives the difference in the pricing, whether or not it's it's a high manufacturing effectiveness, which makes it cheaper than the other ones. I, I don't know because it feels the same, it looks the same. And if I was to provide a, a blindfolded test knit and test wear, I don't think I could tell the difference. I don't think so. I can see when looking at the this Rosa one, it looks a bit more shiny than the these ones. But yeah, the same content of the three uh, plant fibers. So I don't know. And it's the same uh, gauge. It's a size four millimeter needle, US size six for all three of them. Um, so yeah, it says 21 rows here, but my, in my experience, it it will, uh, and it also says 21 here and 20, uh, or not rows, but stitches. But uh, by wear and blocking, it ends in the same way with 20 stitches. So, I mean, yeah. That's nice that you have different brands and different uh, yarns so that you can choose for your liking and your budget. Let's move. As you can see, I have now changed outfit to this crochet top, uh, being ready for the section knitting fun facts, today covering connectivity and a story of my own 
how I found a knitter out there. I find simply find it amazing how uh, our passion for knitting and crocheting can um, connect us throughout the world and how warm and helpful and appreciative this community is. It's simply amazing. And no matter our differences, politics, religion or other beliefs, we can unite and share our ideas and projects, knowledge and techniques. How wonderful is that? And um, back to this piece. And this is how the story goes. I find it like, yeah, finding a needle in a haystack story. So back in my video episode number two, I talked about this piece and how I found um, a picture when I Googled crochet top. And it was there. I thought, fantastic top. I want to make it. And um, I searched high and low for the designer, but with no luck. Uh, in Ravelry, there was um, a design somewhat similar. So I went by that one and uh, the rest by the eye from the picture. And uh, then after this uh, video was issued, suddenly in my Instagram feed, I see this picture again and we find each other um, and connect. And it turns out that the designer is Natalie Smirnova. She is located in Russia. And she kindly shared this um, pattern with me in English via Telegram. Oh yes, knitters find their way. And I was so grateful and yeah, amazed because how, how is the, the probability that she would see my video or I would find an old post of hers on Instagram so that we could uh, connect. It's crazy. <laughs> And uh, when, when I wear this piece, uh, I get many compliments uh, and uh, people say, hey, I also want uh, such a piece and could you make me one? So it is great. And uh, Natalia, she is so talented and so ingenuitive. So if you haven't seen her before, I suggest you, you pass by her Instagram account and I will link her name below. And again, it's crazy, fate or whatever. Maybe this is how the universe works. If the time is right and you want it enough and you're ready, things may happen to you and go your way. Fantastic. Let's talk about short rows in this session of Knitting Math Hack. We will talk about how and where to use short rows to shape a sweater. And this is my angle, it's design wise. When you need more information on a short row techniques and how actually to knit them, I will highly recommend some uh, YouTubers, uh, which I use myself a very uh, very skilled at uh, teaching on YouTube. You will find the links below. So uh, let's start at the poster here beside me. So starting at the top, uh, we use uh, short rows uh, to shape the neckline and to raise uh, the garment in the back. You can use short rows when you want to make puff sleeves and you need extra volume for the puff. Another place on the arm is if you make three quarter sleeves and you don't want the sleeve to be uh, longer here than, than when it has to go around the elbow. So you need extra fabric provided by short rows here on the elbows. The next place you can use short rows is as breast starts. Uh, if you ha have the problem that uh, your garment will be shorter in the front than in the back, uh, you can use these um, uh, breast starts. They will be your best friend. And in the next place, I call tummy darts. If you knit for a pregnant woman 
or you just have a good tummy, then you can make uh, darts here at the uh, widest place on your tummy. You can also use uh, darts, or I call them short rows, in the hem if you want to make a curved hem, or you just want it to be longer in the back than in the front. And earlier in the video, you heard me talk about short rows in the sides here when I had these drop stitches, which are four rows, and I had to account and go forth and back in order to have the same uh, length of the, of the band here and the garment itself. So, I mean, a lot of places to use uh, short rows, it's just your fantasy and imagination um, to limit you. Okay. As a newbie designer, I've been very curious to learn how to shape the different kinds of necklines, the deep one, uh, the more crude one, and, and the boat neck, and try to get an overview and figure out if there's some rule of thumb or something. It has been a, a bit hard for me to, to find it. Actually, uh, many talk about doing the short rows, but not so many on how and where to place uh, the markers and which would be the math around it and so on. I have found some very good ones and I will link them again below and try to convey here what I have um, collected. But, and also the ideas on my own on, on how to go about it in, in my uh, sweaters. Okay. But, before uh, moving on, I am a scientist, so I had to move back and see how would you know the height of the wedge in the neck or the, the number of short rows. Um, and of course, you can find an answer in anatomy. So look at the guy beside me. Um, it's actually the distance between the clavicle and if you are slim enough, you will see the two knuckles going out here and then the C5 neck bone here. This provides uh, the distance. And the distance, as you can see, is a bit different for men and women. And of course, depending on your height. But as a rule of thumb, we could say that for women, it's five centimeters and men six centimeters. Then we know uh, what to go for. So... Now the next step is, yeah, actually, what is the next step? I've made a five-step plan for short rows. So let's take a walk of the five steps. My grandson just passed by, so where were we? Oh yeah, the five steps. So step number zero, or the fundamental thing, is make your gauge watch. Because you know, you need to know your row gauge. So make the usual uh, square uh, gauge four times four centimeters or, or four times four inches or 10 times 10 centimeters and preferably in the pattern of your sweater. So that's the first thing. And now you know if you're a man or a woman, you want these five centimeters I would do because I'm a woman. So, and a short woman, <laughs> I would say. Uh, Okay, now he's here again. I, I just need to stop because he's knocking at the door. One minute, I'm back again. My grandson wanted me to join him in the garden to pick raspberries and look at the wagtail being in the kitchen garden. I also included it in the intro. Okay, but where were we? Yeah, I guess we were had just talked about gauge watching. So now we need to establish the number of rows needed uh, to the five centimeters uh, in the back. And uh, then you have to look for the gauge watch. Uh, you can have a pre-idea on looking on, on the label, but my specific yarn here, the Fiesta yarn from CVC, it calls for, was it 34 rows? Um, for 10 centimeters or four inches. So as I need um, the five centimeters, you just divide by two and this will be 
round it down to seven, 16 rows. And then I would know the number of turns to do. So I would have the 16 rows divided by two, which gives me eight uh, turns. So now I know the number of turns. So now the tricky part is where to place the turns. And exactly this is um, uh, the, the uh, what's it called? <laughs> the important part of short rows. Because these, where you place the dots will determine how the neck will be. And here is what maybe you would think uh, I do, <laughs> that it gets a bit complicated. And where I search for rule of thumb, and um, mm, there is a general rule, but I guess for a round neck, but I couldn't find anything for a more crude neck or, or what to do with boat necks and so on. So I guess you will have to uh, figure it out yourself. Or please let me know if you have the general rules or how to do it. I would love to, to know. Okay, but uh, I have now prepared some some sheets to show you for this uh, specific uh, beach drop top. So that's what we will look at now. Here it is. It may be a bit tricky to see it, but I'll try to do my best. Um, yeah. So I will look not in your eye, but, but at the picture uh, to be able to tell you. Okay. So this is a schematic of my neckline. So in this specific garment, I wanted a round neckline. And as you can see here, this is the back side and this is the front side. And actually I have also rounded on the back side. So when I measured that I needed uh, 16 rows uh, to raise the back, it would actually be like, this is a line zero, this would be 16 rows. If I add rows in the back where I shape and round down, actually I would have to add these rows on top of here in order for me to provide the rays in the neck that I wanted. And the depth of this is the tricky part because you have a given number of rows to, to work with and then you have to make the shaping work within this uh, number of rows. So if you would want uh, the neckline even deeper than this one, you would have to have more stitches being uh, at a straight line here in order for it to be even more deep. But I guess this is, is uh, fairly deep and uh, will suffice for, for my uh, pattern. So now looking for um, a rule of thumbs. So when you shape a neck, you have the full length of stitches of your sweater, and then you have uh, the, the neck hole here. So as a rule of thumb, when you do the neck hole, the first part would be uh, I will shortly rewind a bit because how do you even know how wide the neck hole should be on your garment before you consider the shaping of the neck hole? Um, I don't have any uh, rule of thumb. So if you have out there, please uh, let us know uh, what it is. But this is a top with a kind of drop shoulder construction, even though you don't add a sleeve. So I know the width of the garment and I know approximately how wide I would like it to be. So I just measured in centimeters and calculated the number of stitches. And in this instance, it was, wasn't it 48? Um, yes, it was. Uh, so the width is 48. So now I start uh, designing the neck hole. And I, as I said, I both wanted a bit shaping in the back to be just a bit round in the back and also in the front. Okay, so the rule of thumb is that in the back piece, 
you have a center part which is approximately one half of the width of the neck hold. And in the front part, you will have one third of the width of the neck hold. And then you work from there. The next rule of thumb is how do you then uh, do the steps here? Of course, you need to consider the number of rows to work with. But again, the steps would then be uh, you have one quarter here and then you have the the other quarter here which you divide in two so uh, one uh, I don't know what is in English one over eight one over eight and then you can add it the steps so that's what I did I added uh, three steps one bigger step and two small steps here so it's kind of like when you design yourselves you tweak and twerk a bit um, and you can uh, easily draw this just in an Excel sheet or just on a, a, quarter, a paper with the quarters in it. it. It's easy and just draw the shape you want. Okay, so it's the same principle up here. So we will focus on the back side of it. So I um, had the number of turns here being eight. And with eight turns gives me, no, sorry, eight rows gives four turns. And uh, the way I do it uh, when I design these sweaters, I don't draw up all this. I just make a line. So I draw a line with the total width of the neck hole and I make a, a, a pin here for the center of the back or center of the front. And then I take this uh, one half uh, of the width of the neck hole and then add in uh, uh, draw lines here and then i calculate the number of stitches so i start with this one and it told me to do was it 12 stitches on each side yes it was so now i can figure out how many i need on the other sides but please if you need um even more detailed uh, walkthrough of, of numbers and calculations. There are others out there explaining it so brilliantly. So this is to, to give you an overview of how I do it. So I just add in these calculations and when in my journal I have um, just this line, I know exactly where to put the pins and uh, how to do it. So. Let's have a look at the garment. You can see here at the back, and it was even more easy for me because there are three stitches in this one. So here's the center pin of the back, the first 12 stitches, the next six stitches, and three and three. And then I have a, a blue, maybe it's fallen out, but I had a blue center pin here on, uh, on the sides. So, and, and the same principle in the front. However, with the rule of thumb that this is not one half, but one third, and you make more steps gradually, depending on how round you want it. Uh, so it's, it's, to your taste and your liking, I would say, and you can scribble, scrabble with, with the steps. So how to do this with short rows without casting off, uh, cutting your yarn or whatever. Uh, I've also drawn a principle here. It's hard to see, but of course this will be in the pattern if I make one for, for this piece. So. Yeah, what do you say? Maybe I should do like this for just a second. Then you can see. And then I will have it uh, for myself. Okay. So uh, it's just an example of how you do it on the back piece. Because you have to start the short rows on the left shoulder. So we are in the back here. And I've knitted across, and then I start the short rows. I, I'm on the right side of the piece, and I work over here. 
then I turn like I would do and purling back or depending on the pattern. And when I reach uh, the dart over here, the one closest to the center pin, I will make a turn, go back, make a turn to the next one, go back, make a turn and so on. And when I reach the last turn, up here at the shoulder, I just go all the way back to the other shoulder and do the same thing on that shoulder. And that's why uh, on, a, on a schematic, it looks kind of uh, twisted. Of course, it's not, it, it will still be the round, but it's in, in order to illustrate that, that um, you do on here, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, and then, um, Oh, I've written it so uh, that I can't even read it myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I pull back to the other side and then buy and go back. And then I turn, go back, turn, as I explained. And then you have all the stitches on your shoulder um, for you to pick up and also also when when you do the front piece it's the same thing you have all the stitches here and then you can do uh, like this you just add the pieces together uh, right side against right side and you knit the stitches together then you end and close off and then you end up uh, you start at, at the outside of the of the garment and end here at the at the neck band. Actually, I didn't cut the yarn for either piece, so I had the balls, uh, two balls to work with to go down here. So when I ended here, I have one stitch left from the close, the close uh, cast off uh, uh, on the knitting here, and also in the other side. So the neck band would be the remaining stitches uh, plus one plus one. And then you just move on and uh, do the neck ribbing or a garter band here as, as your liking would be. So this is how uh, I did this. So what would be takeaways or my learnings with short rows? It's this rule of thumb and uh, how to do it. And uh, I figured out most often when I do these sweaters, I only do the raise in the neck. So I actually stop the short rows here. And uh, so I do short rows in the back. And mm, I'll just do like this. Oh, I take this one. So imagine it's a funny thing about it. So actually, when you do the short rows here, and this is where you, this is the wedge you get in the back. So picture it's sitting like this. And this is the race in the back. No, as you can probably tell, I'm not a teacher, so <laughs> I'm still improving how to explain what I'm doing. It has always been my, uh, a challenge because a lot of is going on uh, of ideas uh, tumbling upon each other but i will try to do it uh, more simple so we have this this wedge we started we start in the back side and we do this so i i will just cut it out because this is how I visually, you know, had an epiphany, <laughs> so to speak. So I'm just cutting just a second. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for the noise. But uh, maybe I can fast forward, but it will not take long. Okay. So what I typically do in uh, my dis 
sweater designs it sounds big because so many i haven't made so many but what i've done in the flower pot tea is that i have done the short rows to raise the back but i have stopped the short rows in the center shoulder so i haven't gone all the way around here so what i have been doing is i've set the pins here and then worked my way out to the shoulder so this would be the wedge and picture this is my back then it would look like this going out to the shoulder so actually when we do this in the back you raise the neck and how it would look like in the front is like this so while you raise your back this will be the curve in the front. So when I saw this as an epiphany, I call it, wow, it made sense to me. Because now when doing the short rows in the back to the shoulder side, I can totally um, decide how it should look like in the front, how, right, uh, how round and wide and so on. And you can see the example here uh, in the flower bud tea. So I have the center line of the shoulder here and I just did the short rows like this and got a nice uh, round uh, neck. If you want it deeper, I guess this is the place where you need to go further down here but have a straight line here, a, a long step without doing short rows. So you do short rows mm -mm 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 here, a long step without short rows and then short rows here again then you will give, uh, get, <clears throat> can get a deeper neckline or a, a crude one uh, to your liking. But uh, experienced designers out there, please uh, let me know of your uh, tricks because, um, or if I'm totally wrong of my epiphany, I don't know, but it made sense. And I mean, uh, the sweater uh, turned out turned out as I wanted it to. So uh, the final thing about short rows I will talk about is where to put them. Because as the name says, it's a short row is a row going short. You don't go all the way. But there's a different uh, difference in how it's seen in the knitwear if you start with the long rows instead of the short rows. So let's have a look at the whiteboard beside me. And while you look at the whiteboard, I will try to show it here. So this is the back of my piece. And I will say my preference is going with the short ones first, because then they get hidden here at the neckline. So the first pins would be around here. So I go this way, back, there, 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 wood, wood, and then all the way around. If I were to do the long first, then I would go all the way here, all the way to the other side, go back here, go back here. And you can see now I move further and further back uh, or longer and longer down in the neck so that instead of my uh, short rows or wraps or what you call them turns would be here uh, hidden in the neckline it will be longer down maybe because i i did these stitches they could have been hidden here but i definitely prefer them up here and if you look closely especially because a uh, summer yarn is not forgiving. You can see them, but I mean, it's fairly okay, isn't it? So this is how I prefer it. And if I have a pattern which calls for uh, going long first, I change it to short because I would like it to be hidden in the neckline. However, when doing breast darts or tummy darts, you can't avoid them being seen so now it's a matter of getting the right technique to do it and um, i can highly recommend rocks knits 
she is fabulous. She's made a test uh, of all the different short room techniques and uh, how they look and how to do them. And uh, there is a simple one, just turning, doing nothing. And this will give you a hold. So that's uh, no can do, I would say. But as she says, the other ones, it's a matter of your liking and uh, what you can remember. So her, her good advice is take the one you can remember and stick by it. So uh, I guess I started out with the, uh, my own preference. I started out with German short rows, but I turned to the wrap and turn um seeing uh, coconuts do them and i find they look nicer for me maybe it's me not being able to do the right tension with the with um, a german short rows i don't know maybe i would be better now with some more practice so um, but even so check it out yeah i guess this was the section on short rows and neck shaping we've come to the end of the video now i hope you liked it if you did please leave us a thumbs up and a subscribe i guess i reached out for your expertise and practice today so i would really enjoy um, reading and answering your comments on your projects and thoughts and uh, please watch out for my new short video coming up soon uh, on help on which of my designs to pattern first yeah so i hope your day will continue to be just as jolliest and good so this was all roger and over from english knitting lab bye bye